All right, so in this section, I'm going to talk about perhaps the most valuable study method I've utilized uh, both in my own game and in my coaching is which is database review. And this is specific to online players. Of course, this is um, something that I actually encourage a lot of my students who mostly play live to build up by playing hands online as quickly as possible, um, maybe at lower stakes as just a technique to, to build up some data on themselves, uh, because I think this is the most honest way to not only like, understand your own game, but also um, be able to, to focus and, and uh, specify what areas uh, of your game need the most work. Um, and maybe even present some opportunities to to think about the same stuff for your opponents. So this is the overview of how I use database review and what we're going to be talking about. Uh, first thing, self reflection. This is just the it's the home page that you should come back to uh, pretty much whenever you've played enough hands um, to be meaningful in the recent past. So constantly updating your database, uh, constantly checking to see if your if your stats are changing or if your your style is changing based on something you uh, maybe tried to accomplish a, a change that you tried to implement in your strategy. It's really important uh, to keep coming back to your database and and look at your stats and and self reflect. Uh, the other thing, I guess, um, same idea, but but looking at your opponent at your opponent's database. Uh, is population research. So this is a really uh, valuable tool for exploitative game planning, which is the third point here. And you can't do that unless you know who you're up against. Uh, so when I say population research, I, in some cases, I'm talking about specific opponents. So let's say you, you are on a small site um, or you play heads up and you're looking at the same opponents very frequently. It's going to be valuable for you to look into the data on those particular opponents, maybe take notes on how to adjust to their styles. Uh, but this could also just be, let's say you play on a big anonymous player pool, uh, or you or you just play high volume of ring games like Zoom or um, Blitz, and you are up against different opponents all the time. So looking at the average uh, opponent is another thing that I might do in, in my database, uh, and I can show you how to do that later in this video. And the last thing I'm going to show is what I'm calling ideal heads up, no limit data. Uh, this is going to be the part of the course where I introduce a lot of the results that I got from running aggregate reports on heads up, no limit scenarios and PO solver. And I used those reports to extract uh, target statistics in all the areas that I think are important in heads up, no limit. So we're going to have something to compare uh, my stats, or you know, if you're if you're taking this course as a heads up player, your stats uh, against some theoretical benchmarks. So, talking about self reflection, the idea in analyzing your database is to identify the problem areas. So, identify the leaks in your game uh, and set goals for yourself to improve on those leaks. And like I mentioned at the beginning, this is something you want to repeat often. Uh, a lot of my students tend to have relevant data every three months or so if they're full-time players. Um, I would suggest, depending on the game format, you set like a target of number of hands uh, rather than time because the, the number of hands is going to um, influence how reliable the stats are. But if you're looking at really basic statistics, pre-flop stats, um, maybe flop you know, fold the seabed or flop check raise, something that comes up very frequently, these are going to converge really quick. And that means that you're going to be able to uh, reflect on those stats more frequently. So if you're trying to fix something in your pre-flop game or, or your flop strategy, you could probably check that after like a month or so, uh, perhaps looking at it in, in hands, like every 15,000 or 20,000 hands would be fine. But if you're trying to look at for example, your fold to river seabet or your turn check raise, uh, you're going to want to wait for a much larger sample to develop for those stats to be meaningful. 
Uh, those are also areas where I would just maybe recommend individual hand review uh, rather than data analysis, because the the data analysis is much better at capturing uh, frequent scenarios that are harder to analyze one hand at a time. Now, when thinking about population research, this is where we're seeking opportunities to find exploits. And something that I talked about in the uh, theoretical versus practical introduction to the course was understanding how to define your edge. And using database analysis, this is going to be pretty much, at, at least for me, it's the primary way that I define my edge. I look at my opponent's stats and I figure out what it is that they're doing poorly that I know how to take advantage of. Um, so this is where building a game plan comes in. This is going to be the, the last section of the course where we do this in quite a bit of detail. Um, although the game plan that I put together is based mostly on theoretical information, uh, this is going to be the part of the course now where we talk a little bit about how to develop a game plan that is exploitative in nature. Um, and the reason I wrote Seek Feedback on here is just because it's it's not obvious, I think, to a lot of people who aren't statistically minded what to do with this data. Uh, I'm going to try to introduce that to you in a moment, but it can be complicated, I think, to see all the information that Poker Tracker or hand to note or whatever program throws at you and feel confident that you're doing the right thing with that information. So I do think it's really important to, to reach out to your peer group, to use you know, your Discord community, to use your private coach, and make sure that the, the way that you're interpreting the data is uh, reasonable. So at this point, I'm going to take a look in my database, and I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that, first of all, I would self-reflect, and then second of all, uh, look at my opponent's data and, and consider an exploitative approach. Now, what you're looking at here is the report that I've built in Poker Tracker 4. This is my program of choice, although I know that a lot of people who have had experience with hand to note find that to be a really powerful program, especially for population analysis. That's something that I'm familiar with, but not familiar enough to do a full presentation uh, on video. So if that's your program of choice, that's great. I actually think there's some uh, advantages to using that program over a poker tracker. Uh, same with Holden Manager 3. I think that there's advantages to using that as well. But uh, the thing that I like about Poker Tracker is that I was able to build a report and it's a shareable file. So this is a report that I can share with my students and we can replicate the same structure, uh, have all the same statistics on you know their poker tracker and my poker tracker. And in this way, it's a lot easier to analyze uh, stats over time, compare stats over time, you know, look back at the data that we had from a year ago or three months ago or whatever it is. So I do think that for my purposes, this, this has been the best program. But I think uh, for those of you who might be playing uh, higher volume and are more inclined to do population research, that's uh, hand to note is, is uh, the software that I would recommend for that purpose. So the first thing I talked about was self-reflection. Let me walk you through what I've included in this report and why. Uh, so this is the Heads Up No Limit sample from the Legend Showdown. Uh, I know that we're this is a much smaller sample than I would normally analyze, uh, but I thought that for the purposes of this course, it was the most interesting sample to analyze. So for the sake of, uh, I, would, I suppose, the quality of the content, there's uh, this is a much smaller number of hands than I would recommend analyzing and and assuming that that data is valid. So I will, you know, probably multiple times uh, throughout this video, make qualifying statements that say, you know, over larger samples, this would be more relevant than it is now. Um, but I still think that this is a good a good starting point, um, and it'll show you how I would work with small samples if that does come up in your case. So. Up to about here, the fold to four bet plus statistic, we're looking at preflop stats. The uh, rows here are broken up by position, which for heads up means we have the button or the small blind on top, and we have the big blind on bottom. And that's going to help uh, keep this report a little bit simpler in terms of in position and out of position play. 
because we know that everything that's in the small blind is being played in position and everything that's in the big blind is being played out of position. If you're a ring player or a tournament player, you're going to have to do more filtering uh, in your own database to make sure that you're getting that correct. But as is, we can just make that assumption. So we've got raise first, we've got limp, three bet. Some of these stats are just not going to show up because they're not relevant to heads up. And uh, everything in in here, um, I think, is pretty easy to compare to uh, preflop solutions. So that, that would be how I would approach uh, preflop play, is I would compare these numbers to preflop solutions. And uh, one other actually really cool technique that I'll show quickly, if you are trying to compare to a actual charts, um, is to go to the statistics tab and select hand range visualizer from the reports dropdown menu here. In this area, you can see, for example, I've got my, my small blind four bet selected here. Uh, you can choose what decision point preflop you want to visualize. And in doing so, you could see how closely you're following the strategy that you set out to follow. Uh, this might seem silly, but uh, if you're this far into the course, you know how important I think it is to work on your execution in addition to your theoretical knowledge. And a surprising amount of people just struggle with execution on their preflop ranges. Uh, it's it's quite common, I think, to to go into um, the visualizer and find that you know, let's say, call preflop three bet, all of a sudden has like a set of hands that's just not supposed to be calling, or it's missing a set of hands that's supposed to be calling. Uh, so these are good ways to check in on your own preflop execution. Uh, those of you who play six max would have a lot more interesting scenarios to to check here uh, for example positional four betting or positional call three betting where the difference between playing accurately could be costing you a lot of money so i'm going to go back to the report here now in the post flop stats there's quite a number so i've grouped at the beginning um c betting the only reason there's in position and out of position here is for my six max students um, we have c-betting, check-raising, fold to c-betting, fold to check-raising. And then once we get to probe turn, I figured there might be some explaining for what these uh, stats are. Uh, probe turn is the out-of-position bet facing a check-check on the flop. So if uh, we probe turn from the big blind, that means that the button checked behind in a single raise pot. And then this is a custom stat here for betting river after that turn bet is called. Um, this 50% here can be ignored safely. I think this is just sometimes with the custom stats, there's a bug that it picks up some kind of bet that, um, doesn't apply to the situation. So just interested in this big blind one here, probe turn and follow through. There's also how we respond to probes from the button. So calling, raising and folding. Uh, and then again, a custom stat for folding river after calling the turn probe. So this introduces you a little bit to how I think about you know, data deeper into the game tree. We're verifying how aggressive are we playing and how uh, well are we defending against bets at all the different lines that we could possibly be facing. So then probe river, this is missed turn C bet. So in order to probe the river from the big blind, we need to check call the flop. This is not a check down to the river situation. Um, this means that we are betting about 50% of the time when the button misses a turn C bet opportunity. Uh, and then here, fold to river probe. This is how often we're folding when we miss a turn C bet opportunity in position. The float bet is uh, the definition of float betting is betting when check to from the preflop raiser. So you can float bet when you called preflop in position, which can only happen in three bet pots in, in heads up. So this means uh, float turn is calling a three bet, calling a flop C bet, and then betting one check two on the turn. Uh, same with fold to turn float. This is three betting preflop, betting the flop, and then check folding the turn. So these are important uh, aggression and defense st statistics to be aware of, again, deeper into the game tree. The float flop uh, used to work, or may maybe it is working, it's possible. Um, this this should be possible in heads up. It's it's possible my stat is broken here, but you know, calling a three bet and then being checked to on the flop 
This would be how often do we bet in that situation. Delayed C betting. This is when we miss a C bet and then we bet the turn instead uh, after, after the flop checks through. So this could happen both in three bet pots or in single raise pots. So you're seeing stats for both the delayed C bet and the follow through on the river and then the fold to turn delay C bet from both positions. So those are all of the node specific stats that I have in my report. After that are these three went to showdown percentage, $1 at showdown, $1 when saw flop. These are really valuable overall statistics. Um, you'll notice that I don't have win rates on my report. I use these statistics as indicators that are more useful in my opinion than win rates. I think that tracking your went to showdown percentage and your one when saw flop especially are really good ways to figure out am I fighting for enough pots and am I successful and and one at showdown is sort of am I being successful in doing so. So the combination of these three is a bit hard to generalize, but overall, I would say it's very normal that you're seeing the small blind or the button uh, is doing a lot more winning when soft flop. That's just playing in position and having the ability to bet more aggressively. Uh, the out of position player with the weaker range is generally going to lose more non showdown, but fight to get to showdown. Um, as often as possible and win their fair share of those showdowns. Call river efficiency kind of plays into this as well. This is the, the stat just to the right there. And this is going to reflect how well I'm doing in terms of return on investment when I do decide to call the river. Uh, so this is particularly useful for the big blind where I'm going to be faced with a lot of bluff catching decisions. I need to know in these times that I'm getting to showdown and calling river bets, am I doing so at some sort of positive win rate? And perhaps am I doing it at too, too high of a positive win rate? Uh, for example, a common leak is to not get to showdown enough and to win, to have too high of a call river efficiency. This would mean that you're playing the river too conservatively, not bluff catching light enough. And as a result, when you call, you're, ver you're showing the best hand down a huge percentage of the time. So that would be a common pattern that I would look for in these stats here for someone who's playing uh, not enough bluff catching. So over these really small samples, again, stuff like call river efficiency, not going to be super useful. Uh, but the overall stats here, I would say reflect my style fairly well. The only thing I would say is I'm probably winning at showdown in the big blind more <laughs> than I'm supposed to um, just because I ran well over the sample. I did win the legend showdown after all. Um, so these last stats on the report here, these are more designed for when I am filtering for specific spots. Uh, and this might come up when we look a little bit closer at the ideal heads up statistics that I generated from PO Solver. There are some stats that do not have preset uh, poker tracker defined statistics, which means that I have to do some filtering to figure out you know, how much betting am I doing in this situation? How much folding am I doing in that situation? Or how much raising am I doing in that situation? So when I filter for those specific nodes, I can come to the end of the report here and I can look at betting flop turn river, folding flop turn river, raising flop turn river. Um, the last stat on here, C bet success. This is a nice one for population research. This is quite literally just when you C bet, how often do they fold? Uh, so you can see over this sample, I was getting, you know, 30% folds on flops, uh, 40 or so on turns and 60 or so on rivers. So that is the quick walkthrough on my report setup. Um, I think what I'm going to do is split into a couple videos from here. Uh, first walking through the analysis of how well I'm doing in comparison to theory and then doing the analysis uh, from an exploitative mindset of what I could do to take advantage of someone playing in this style.